Now that's the first Mommy. word on the video. Hello, I have a cooking video for you today. Um, we're going to be making chocolate chip cookies. Uh, this is not a cookbook. This is the shoe box by Francine Rivers, but I was reading this the other day and there are recipes in it. So the first one, I'm speaking. The first one that we decided we wanted to make is these chocolate chip cookies and they've also got toffee bits in them. So um, we're gonna alternate who's doing the camera because, hey, because Alex is going to be helping with the mixing and stuff. But um, if you get this, that'll have the recipe in it, that sort of thing. Got all the ingredients measured out, so on and so forth. So we're gonna get into this. We've also got a little helper down here. River. River, river. She's helping. Kind She's of. face. Okay. Now you're coming to me over there. Yeah, I'm gonna read and you mix. <coughs> Excuse me. Use my corpulent bottoms are Okay. So this is a quick look at the recipe. If you want to pause it or anything, it gives you the amounts. But like I said, it's in this book. So um the first thing, hi husband, is to combine the butter. It's mostly soft, it'll be good enough. You'll probably want to use your dough hook for it. Oh boy. Um well there it is. Okay. King Arthur flour dough hook. If you can get one of these, do so. They're they're a lifesaver. Okay, so you've got your bowl, so first combine the butter. Okay, this. Yes, this bowl. I saw you pull out other bowls. I don't know if we had to mix something separate and add it in. No. Nope. I haven't looked at the recipe. I'm going off of faith in my wife. And as you clean off, like, plates. River, we're filming. As you clean off plates and stuff, um... You can put them behind you where that towel is. Here's the trash. Before anyone laughs about me having faith in my wife, I found the best one. River. And if you haven't found part you can trust, well, that's your problem. There you go. Okay. Then both sugars, the brown and the white sugar. All together? Yep. That's not sugar. Salt. Oh, yeah. That's how much salt we have. This is how much sugar. Mm. The butter is two sticks. The granulated sugar is three quarters of a cup. And the packed brown sugar is also three quarters of a cup. Break it up a little bit so that it spreads more easily. Makes it easier to mix if you can distribute it properly. And then the eggs, which is two eggs. And yes, Alex is a bit injured. He cut his finger on the glass this morning while being an amazing husband and washing dishes. <laughs> and the last thing right there is the vanilla extract, which is two teaspoons. And you stir until creamy. That's gonna be a bit. It's almost better, I think, to fold this. This butter didn't exactly. Off enough, but whatever. And Pookie. <laughs> she ate mac and cheese for lunch, so. Okay, so now it looks like this. This is really bad if you got arthritis. Sorry, luckily, dear. Luckily, I don't. I'm not quite this, I do. Uh, the next one is mix the baking soda and salt with flour and add to the large bowl. So we have a teaspoon each. Um, so that means. Mixing a separate bowl. Yeah. I don't know if it'll fit in there. It should. Okay. What you'll want to do. Give me a dense whisk. Yeah, it'll work. 
This is actually medium density. See, there's different densities of whisks. They do different things. That's my favorite type of whisk. I like the really dense ones and they're making like an omelet or something like that. But if I'm baking, I usually like a pretty... Uh, open one, but dense ones are really good for something like this, because you're working a lot of fine textures together. But the reason why the dense one works so well with an omelet is you're introducing a lot of, a lot of air to it, so it makes it nice and fluffy. What I did forget to say is that the flour is two and a quarter cups of all-purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, like King Arthur flour. now you stir everything together in the big bowl. Okay, give me a moment, River. Right now I'm folding it. You know, I'm I'm saying a lot of things that are probably pretty obvious to anyone who's baked, but I had to learn all this stuff and I learned all of it from Shannon. And now we love baking together. Mm-hmm. We make a killer for Kasha. Most everything they make is pretty good because oh, Shannon's really good at it. She taught me really well. And I learned from my grandmas. And a little bit from my dad. I learned a little bit from my mother. but Don't mess with the toaster, baby. For some reason, I never sat down and learned how to bake from her. I learned more about cooking. This is about the point where you can taste test the dough. Sure you get the stuff in the bottom. Alright, so that's good dough. Let River try some. River, this is cookie dough, homemade. What do you think, little girl? Is it nom nom nom? Nom. Nom. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we have to do is add the chocolate and toffee bits. Um, one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips and one quarter cup of Heath Bar toffee bits. Now. The last time I used Heath Bar was ages ago, you know, Bits was ages ago, and they only had one kind. Well, now they have two kinds, so I chose the milk chocolate ones since they are chocolate chip cookies, because I wasn't sure which ones to pick. See, so I did this to demonstrate the problem with getting something this thick with a too dense of a whisk, but this is easily handled. The recipe, by the way, says you can add nuts as well. Chopped pecans, macadamia nuts, or walnuts are best. I've also added raisins. Macadamia um, nuts. Oh. I just chose not to add nuts, personally, but I would assume you would add, like, maybe a quarter of a cup of nuts. It really depends. That's that's one thing that with, uh, with baking, you usually have to be fairly precise, but... And it's a garnishment like that, you add it to taste. It becomes more like cooking at that point. The only thing you really have to worry about is if you get too much chunk things, like nuts, bits, chocolate chips, whatever. You'll end up with uneven baking. Well, not only that, you won't have cookies because there won't be enough dough to stick everything together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true, I hadn't thought about that. It's kind of like this pepperoni pizza I like where you can't see the cheese. I don't care if that's the most vanilla topping of all time. I like pepperoni. Yeah, I know. You love it too, and so does your sister. You told me about that, right? It's the lead in the mall when she's still learning to eat. And I got a slice of pizza, and she really wanted to try it, so I let her have pepperoni. She just went to town. All right. That's pretty well mixed in. Yep. So yeah, you can't see it very well. And you can turn it to really look as well. So, and it looks, it, it won't come out perfectly even all over the place, but whatever, you just kind of gotta not care about that because that adds character to it. 
Now there are baking sheets in the dishwasher freshly washed and it says to drop by spoonfuls onto baking sheet and then bake at 350 degrees until golden brown. How many teaspoons? What? Um, you get like one of those spoons that's like not a cereal size, like a serving one, you know? Uh, like one of those soup spoons? Um, not a soup one. Like the one you had your yogurt with earlier. Oh, big spoon. Those are right there. Pausing. Filming. So, we have two cooking sprays here. One's, of course, Pam regular olive oil. Um, we prefer this over the regular Pam because I have an unhealthy obsession with olive oil. And uh, there's also this baking but baking spray, but this is more for um, for cakes, like, a, well, like cakes, muffins. Cakes, muffins, and breads. Proper pastries. Things you put on a flat sheet like this that aren't like a sheet cake you want to use regular spray for it. At least that's the way I always learned it. Anything you would use flour for, you can use that spray for. Yeah. That's basically what it is. And then the spoon that we were talking about is one of these. Yeah, she had a Twinkie. Yes, you're getting Twinkie everywhere, aren't you, you cute little thing? Don't worry, she already had lunch and everything. You see? Mac and cheese. And you just want to make sure that there's enough room for them to spread out, which is pretty easy to do. That one's going to get stuck in the corner. Okay. I'm helping. <laughs> being hypercritical. I love you. I love you. And uh, we're just going to fill up the baking sheets until we run out of dough. And they cook at 350 until golden brown. No timer, which kind of makes me antsy. But we will see you when they get done. Oh, I was going to do it. Oh, too bad. I'm recording now. Hi. The <laughs> cookies are done. I'm taking this. Um, they got a little bit melty together, but that's okay because we can cut them like we did this one. So here is one complete cookie. And Alex is going to taste test for us. Hi, Mom. Give me just a second. Done, huh? Yeah, they are. They just got to set up, but it's fresh out of the oven. That's when they're the best. You're going to use a fork to eat a cookie. It's going to break apart and fall everywhere on the ground if I don't. Mm. The side's very, very hot, which I can see in your face. Mm. Really good? Mm -hmm. Should we make these again? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a cookie recipe that we made. Um, Just no coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Skip the toffee next time. Yeah, that's what I thought. And besides, it's like coffee cake. Act, or cookie cake. Actually, it has the consistency of cookie cake. So that's it for this video. We'll see you guys next time. I'm going to have another video coming up that is homemade fudge. So we'll see how that goes. I think Alex is really looking forward to that one. So, see you guys next time. Bye.